Okay, we're here with several members of the crew of the Golden Rule. And I think it's important that uh, we talk about some stuff that we haven't reported on yet, which is what we did last Wednesday and Thursday. So we spent the day in Washington, D.C. at the U.S. Capitol, going out to all the senators and congressmen's office, uh, lobbying them about the Veterans for Peace Nuclear Posture Review. Hello, I'm Jerry Condon and I'm board member of Veterans for Peace and also um, a co-coordinator of the Veterans for Peace Nuclear Abolition Working Group. And that working group has been really busy the last couple years um, actualizing the VFP, part of our mission, Mission of Veterans of Peace, which calls for us to uh, reduce and eventually eliminate all nuclear weapons. Um, so we were very interested in seeing what President Biden's nuclear posture was going to be. Now, ever since the Clinton administration, incoming administrations have issued within usually within weeks or months of of, of coming into power have uh, have issued their nuclear posture review to tell the people of the U.S. and really the people of the world what is the nuclear posture of the United States? Uh, under what circumstances would the U.S. use nuclear weapons? Um, and Biden actually ran, when he was running for president, hinted, well he did more than hint, I think he basically indicated that he uh, was considering uh, adopting a policy of no first use of nuclear weapons, which would be an important step um, towards avoiding nuclear war by accident or otherwise. And it's one of the steps that we support. Um, maybe the first um, of many steps that we support. So we're waiting for Biden to issue his nuclear posture review and months went by and months went by and it hadn't happened. And uh, by the way, eventually it did happen. It's really written by the Pentagon for President Biden. And uh, lo and behold, it did not contain a pledge for no first use. Uh, in fact, it said that the United States could launch a nuclear attack uh, to support, to defend the United States, to defend our allies, and even to defend our non-allies, and even to defend from non-nuclear attacks, like a potentially conventional nuclear attack or a cyber attack. The U.S. could respond with nuclear weapons, so very disturbing. But we hadn't seen that yet, and we decided, well, somebody in the group said, why don't we write our own nuclear posture review? Everybody thought that was a great idea. So we got to work. And several of the members of our group had long experience with the nuclear abolition movement. And uh, others of us got busy doing research and writing. And it was a great learning experience for us. And we ended up producing a really fine document. It's called the Veterans for Peace, Nuclear Posture Review. And uh, it uh, beautifully done. Lots of nice graphics and colors and highlights. And uh, um, we uh, reviewed the U.S. nuclear posture towards all, each of the other eight nuclear armed nations. There's a total of nine nations that that uh, possess nuclear weapons now. Is it true that the United States is the only one of those eight that reserves the right to use first? Actually uses? not. Actually not. Uh, because uh, that w once upon a time, uh, Russia had a uh, had expressed a no first use policy. But at this point in time, Russia reserves the right to respond with nuclear weapons to overwhelming uh, force uh, by, by conventional attack. Uh, that's because the U.S. and NATO have much greater conventional forces 
than does Russia. And they've shown a great hostility towards Russia and they've been surrounding Russia for years uh, with uh, hostile military forces including nuclear weapons and, uh, and anti-ballistic missile systems. So Russia has declared that in the instance that they feel an existential threat like the existence of their country or government um, uh, was threatened by non-nuclear weapons, they will use nuclear weapons. And in fact, that's what, that's what uh, uh, Russian President Putin has been saying several times uh, to the world. Um, he's been saying, this is what our nuclear policy is, this is what the U.S. nuclear policy posture is, and if we keep going this direction of escalating the war in Ukraine, it could lead to nuclear war. Now, some people have interpreted that as Putin threatening nu to use nuclear weapons, and, and that, that interpretation is maybe uh, could be argued that that's what he was doing. But I think he was basically informing the world that this is, this is what we have. This is the nuclear posture that we have. This situation could too easily lead uh, to nuclear war. Uh, so, uh, so the U.S. is actually not the only country. That, ha that, ha that has a, f a potential first use of nuclear weapons. At any rate, uh, uh, we put this document together, reviewing the posture, our posture towards the other eight nuclear countries, plus Iran, that does not have nuclear weapons, but has been under attack for the possibility that maybe someday it might. Um, so uh, um, we also have uh, 16 specific recommendations in this document. Uh, for, we call it correcting our nuclear posture and they include unilateral immediate posture changes that the U.S. could take such as announcing and implementing a no first use and no launch on warning, no hair trigger alert, um, decommissioning the ICBM uh, weapons which are only a first use, first strike weapon. Um, re re removing the president's sole authority to launch a nuclear attack. Uh, the next section is uh, steps we could take uh, to negotiate for nuclear di disarmament, beginning with signing and ratifying the UN Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, uh, actively initiate and pursue negotiations to reduce international tensions, promote strategic stability and prepare the ground for a major reduction in, in nuclear arms, a number of other steps, and finally implementing treaty obligations that we already have. Uh, work with our allies to remove U.S. nuclear weapons stationed in the NATO countries. Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, Belgium, and Turkey all have uh, nuclear weapons stationed, U.S. nuclear weapons stationed there. And uh, local uh, militaries of those countries trained to, uh, to use, use those nuclear weapons. So, uh, uh, anyway, uh, we, the other thing that is interesting in this document, I think, and I like to emphasize um, our conclusion, um, is that uh, the world is a much more dangerous place with nuclear weapons, particularly given the current confrontations among the nuclear armed nations. The United States military seeks full spectrum dominance, and the government appears determined to be the preeminent global power, even in the face of um, diminishing economic power relative to a rising China. It's hard to imagine the U.S. taking steps towards nuclear disarmament without a sea change in the thinking among its political elites and real change in its posture toward the rest of the world. And of course that'll take a huge grassroots uh, movement to make that happen. So we say that activist efforts to restrain U.S. militarism and intervention around the globe to cut the military budget and to encourage mutual respect and diplomacy among nations must therefore go hand in hand with efforts to reduce and eliminate all nuclear weapons. So uh, we uh, actually produced this, Veterans of Peace produced this statement, uh, this document in January of 2022. Uh, it's still pretty timely, uh, perhaps there's still some updating that could be done. but. Um, we put it out there and it actually had a fairly big impact in the nuclear disarmament movement. 
A lot of people have read it. There have been webinars based on it. Um, and uh, it's had an impact. But we've always intended to deliver it to Congress. And finally, uh, with the Golden Rule, anti-nuclear sailboat, being in Washington, D.C., with our crew and our supporters, we decided, well, this is the time to do it. So we did uh, actually pull a team of volunteers and crew members together on Wednesday and Thursday, and we visited every single uh, member of Congress, every senator's office and every, and, and every representative's office. And this week, East being Easter um, vacation week, I guess, uh, all the, all the congressional members of Congress are home in their home districts. So we didn't actually see any uh, senators or representatives uh, face to face, but we did meet uh, with many of their staff people. We let them know. We had a cover card on here, a very attractive picture of the uh, Golden Rule uh, with its tan bark sails, its peace sign, and its Veterans for Peace logo, and told that, that mostly young staffers in those offices, hey, you know, we just arrived on this boat, and that got their attention immediately. And we were able to uh, um, speak with uh, a number of the aides. We were invited into uh, meetings with their aides in several offices, even though we did not have, a, uh, had not made appointments. And in particular, we had a, I was part of a group that met uh, with uh, Senator Markey's aide. Now, Senator Markey of Massachusetts has been a leader in uh, nuclear issues for many years. Um, and uh, he has an aide who's dedicated to uh, uh, nuclear issues and uh, very, very knowledgeable. So we had a, a good meeting with them. We learned about uh, a number of legislative uh, measures that they're planning to take, including uh, uh, introducing a bill to get rid of ICBMs, which would be a good step forward. Um, and a number of other measures. Um, so it was a very good effort. Uh, we uh, were really glad we did it. Plus, we got the every office we went into, we got the card of the pers of the staff person who's who's uh, in charge of defense foreign policy, and we're going to be following up and having local veterans for peace chapters uh, go visit their congressmen at the, when they're in the home district. Uh, to follow up and discuss uh, the Veterans for Peace Nuclear Posture Review with them. So we think that's a, a step forward, we hope. We hope to educate a lot of people and build more support for the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, as well as for uh, the back from the brink measures that will reduce the risk of nuclear war in the meantime. So, uh, Terry, uh, we were on the uh, crew that actually visited all the Senate offices mm -hmm. last Wednesday. And uh, uh, Helen and Barbara were at the same time visiting all the uh, Congress people's offices. So there were, uh, maybe there's some highlights you want to talk about, Helen? Actually, Barbara was visiting senators also in the Hart Building. Oh, right yeah. There. It was the Senate building, one of the other Senate building. Oh. So, what was your impression? Well, it was a very fulfilling and exhausting day. Um, I had a great partner. Um, and I guess the um, highlight for us was in Senator John Tester's office. We were able to meet face-to-face -face with their um, military intern. And uh, it turned out to be a man who was very interested and very knowledgeable. Um, he's the only person we met who, when handed this posture review, actually sat down and opened it up and started reading it and asking us questions about it. So, um, yeah, we really engaged with him with different stories. It turns out that he knows quite a lot about uh, accidents and near accidents and missing nuclear warheads. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, so he's very curious, and he would like to engage further with Helen and Jerry. And then also we got to go to uh, Maisie Hirono, which is my home state senator, and um, 
we didn't get to speak to anybody directly, but we were invited. Um, there was a table set up by her door, and we were invited to create a peace crane. And so, um, and they actually have an intern from Hawaii, a young uh, UH student, and his uh, sole responsibility is to help people make the crane origami. And uh, so he sat us down at a table and taught us how to do it. And we came up with two cranes. We were uh, asked to sign our name and the date and to add them to the collection. So Maisie Hirono is collecting this little effort towards peace from every visitor to her office. So that was memorable. Hey, what about you, Helen? What was your best experience from that day? I really loved visiting with the young people that are the interns. There was only one woman that was a little bit older. Um, Cindy Buell is a representative, Jim McGovern's aide, and she's the legislative director. And she's the primary author of one of the pieces of important legislation in the House, HRAS 77, which supports the goals of the United Nations Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons and the rest of the back from the brink measures, you can get that at preventnuclearwar.org. But it's basically the things that Jerry was talking about, take away the president's sole authority to launch a nuclear strike, take the weapons off of hair trigger alert, get rid of the almost $2 trillion nuclear modernization program, and get, <laughs> declare a no first, po first use policy. So, it's a really important piece of legislation. They're working right now on getting co-sponsors for that. And then soon, Eleanor Holmes Norton will reintroduce her nuclear abolition and economic and, nu and energy conversion act to take away the nuclear weapons and instead use that money for human needs. And that includes getting rid of nuclear energy and switching to carbon-free, nuclear-free energy sources. So that'll be coming out soon. She's looking for co-sponsors as well. And I'm looking forward to engaging with the members of Congress and the senators that we, we talk to, and all, but also getting all of this information into the hands of the Veterans for Peace Nuclear Abolition Working Group so that all of us in, that are interested in this matter in Veterans for Peace can start working on those relationships with representatives and senators. Great. Well, I hope it happens. <laughs> all right. That should cover it then. Thanks. Thank you, Ed.